Uh, I'll just take one minute. Sure. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to day two of the design workshop. And so let's start with what we learned or what we understood yesterday. Yes, everybody is with me, I assume. And so let's begin. Uh, Yesterday, I gave a brief introduction about what this workshop was about and how are we going to take this design journey ahead. Then I took, I told a brief uh, decoding of product design through this uh, design process, which starts from introduction, research phase one, ideation, research phase two, conceptualization, exploration, refinement, and then the final product. Guys, please uh, keep noting all your doubts, all your questions, because after this little presentation, we are going to take questions and answers. The story behind design. So why a brief design history was taken? Learning from the past is very important to move ahead. So I just introduced how the element, the design came to India and how now it has flourished through so many uh, channels, so many institutes, uh, courses, and et cetera. And this workshop is totally based on learning by doing. And this is a beautiful philosophy by Eames. Huh? 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 By NID. Am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. Great. So then we moved ahead with the design of Lota, which is an everyday simple vessel and which evolved from its function. And I gave an example of a product from history, which is a style statement as well. Yeah. So design form, which is also a style statement with form following its function. Then we talked about element of design, the line, shapes, form, colors, textures, and space. We did a little one first assignment and did a framework exercise with line shapes, then shape transition, then uh, deriving a form out of that shape. Breaking down, basically this exercise was called as breaking down from its uh, form to its original shape. Then we had a quick briefing about the 3D, 2D to 3D generation with polygons. The color, why color are helpful in any design model or any design form because they accentuate the features of any design, any product, any form. Then a little briefing about design principles. We watched a video on symmetric, uh, on balance, the principle of balance and also, we talked a bit about everything, how proportions are the most uh, fundamental design principle for furniture design with balance, emphasis, rhyme, and unity. Then I took this picture, which is a beautiful product example of all the design principles fitting in. It's not important that every time you design something, all the principles may fit in, but it is an essential to have at least one of them. Then the phase two was design process. As we know, there are no one design process. There are several, there are infinite design process, but every design process only have one uh, main thing to talk about, which is uh, observe, reflect and make. With this loop, there is a center point where you have to come back and back, front and back and reflect observe and make again. This is a loop and design process goes with a loop. It, it is a never ever ending process, but somehow you have to take a pause, reflect back and give the solutions to the problem which you have picked up. 
then we talked about the ddd the double design design uh, double design method it's a very useful design model which uh, i've used in several of my projects and as a professional also so we learned about discover define develop and deliver and we took a form presentation on site with the natural with the nature inspiring a leaf and a banyan tree and we learn about how material plays a cr crucial role in model making and achieving the desired forms which we want and also the process of transition how when you start developing a design how gradually it transforms and how gradually the forms take shapes and you get your desired form in the end we also learn about the family of forms which is a very essential and basic principle of design you can call it as in when you talk about form philosophy so yes we talked about family of form how each element is different but something is there to bind them all together and make them look like a family and here we took logo as one of those dnas which are making it look alike or a part of a big family then we talked about how material help in achieving forms the desirable forms and a bit light on manufacturing and assembling it is a big topic so i just skipped it but yes i wanted to uh, make it a point that after the form if after achieving the form the product there is a important aspect to it which is manufacturing and assembling then the final uh, words were product you can take inspirations from nature you can take inspirations from any ongoing project you can take inspirations from product inspiring product wherein this dyson vacuum cleaner has been taken as an inspiration and this beautiful bike has been evolved then the most fundamental and amazing thing which all designers should know this is like the key to designing design language understanding design language following design language is the most uh, important thing in designing anything you can get inspiration you can follow as i said products inspired from products you can pick a picture and can take design language design uh, thoughts from it and can carry forward your design your ideations your products also the we talked about product family which is one of the very fundamental and uh, important part of designing again and i took an example of apple where everything forms in this family in a beautiful geometrical shape and also with curves geometry with curves then moving ahead we went to talk about furniture design and we talked about how to create mood boards design can start with the inspiration or it can also start with the ideation you already know what you have to design you have a idea and you need to put that idea forward right so how do you do it you create a mood board the idea is i have to create a chair which is uh, inspired from a hand shape like this and then you have to take it forward how do you do that so mood mood board helps in doing and achieving such kinds of design assignments and visual representation is another key factor for any design you know the way you present your design either elevates it or destroys it so your proper presentation the use of proper colors the use of principles and how your design how that product a chair or any product would fit into the bigger space i mean the space it has to be uh, created on or how uh, it can be facilitated in multiple disciplines as well as in can it be can if a office chair like if i have a brief of designing a office chair but this office chair ends up with a beautiful styling and it could be a good fixture for a living room also is it yeah it is possible maybe with little changes this could be a look where it could only go in offices but as as 
as quickly as you put these legs, it could go to a living room design also with little modification and uh, of course, uh, variations. So yes, form variations, uh, how this design can evolve and where in the picture it can fit properly. And also with, with what all products it can combine itself, it can give a appealing look, a beautiful view, a, a product of desire, like people want to buy it. And last and most important thing, uh, working with products, I mean, working with working models to achieving uh, the design clarity, the product clarities. So let's uh, talk about the assignment now. Guys, I haven't received uh, even one uh, entry from you guys. So that's why this revision happened. We could have started day two from uh, uh, today's presentation itself, but yeah, there were no assignments. So I did a quick assignments uh, today morning, like just 15 minutes, 20 minutes ago before this presentation. So let's go ahead and watch my assignment. So day two, the furniture design product. And we are going to talk about chair today. Now, this chair design is a very beautiful design. Oh, give me a minute again. Guys, you all are with me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. So today for furniture design discussion, I took chairs and again with Eames design uh, because he is a master of creating masterpieces. Like these are our legendary furniture pieces which are everywhere, every corner of the world. If you start from this first chair which he designed from this armchair to the uh, counter and bar stools to the wooden. Uh, this was the first chair which they designed out of plywood, uh, molding the plywood, giving it a lot of material and finishes, uh, plastic chairs, aluminum chairs, and a lot and lot of beautiful uh, examples. This Eames lounge chair is one of the legendary examples in chair design and it is everywhere around the world and even these uh, plastic armchairs with the beautiful base underneath it's a proper structural design how it would ca carry any kind of uh, weight it has so many modifications and uh, evolutions with adult and kids design with so many cuddlers with uh, beautiful beautiful concepts so today I have picked a aluminium chair from Eames Group. And this again is a beautiful modification. Uh, office chair, lounge chair, chair in rows as in a waiting area chair. And now I would like you to see uh chair was considered a masterpiece soon after its release and remains ever contemporary today.
The chairs were designed by Charles Ray Eames in 1958, jewels of a bountiful year. Eames's first large-scale multimedia piece, The Information Machine, was at the 58 Brussels World's Fair. And the Eameses initiated India's National Institute of Design that same year. The Eameses saw no contradiction in such a diverse body of work toy elephants to architecture and everything in between. Hope you enjoyed, enjoyed view, uh, viewing the video and so that was the chair which I picked for today and we have seen the video. Now this is my small furniture design product, uh, project which I did as a student because in 15 minutes I could just gather up an old presentation and add it up. So this was the existing picture of the client's house. This was one of my relatives in Ahmedabad. And, uh, yeah, the unit, this uh, corner unit was very clumsy. The wife has started working home with her, um, some work she was doing. She was a researcher and she was doing some work. So they wanted to give the space um, a more of a welcoming space. If a client is also visiting a, visiting their house, how it feels and how it looks. It's, it should not be like a proper house house. It should be a uh, little um, meeting room too but regaining the entity of a house too because it's a dining room in the house that was it so how did we started when she said she wanted to have a you know meeting space so the first word which striked me was a reception area how when you enter any space there is this reception area which is welcoming you and which is serving as an entry point to any building, any space. You have somebody sitting there, you have a, bun a bunch of uh, information to carry forward to decide which part of the building you want to uh, go in. So I took this uh, picture as a, a, a background uh, inspiration and then evolved how and how you know how can we actually go about uh, remember my background in architecture i studied architecture five years and then i was doing this course in 2007 so i was already an architect and i know how furniture design would go so yeah that was the additional so i know uh, when i have to do a life project i have to start thinking what materials i have to use how would it be manufactured assembled and you know the design reverse goes reverse i cannot go on like uh, yeah, I will derive a fundamental fun form first and then I will think, yeah, I would have done that, but this is a life project and the deadline was within a month. So I need to complete it. So this is how I started up with uh, what kind of materials can I use steel? Can I use plywood? Can I use, uh, can I mold it? Can I give uh, geometrical shapes to it? And uh, my inspiration was a reception area. Then the TV unit and the sofa, they have just merged it in the corner. So they have more space. How would it go, you know, in the center of the space? So it is more like a living room than a uh, office space or something like that, a workspace. So how, how this will go on? A lot of sketching, design thoughts and sketching. I mean, design through sketching is the most fundamental and basic thought so this was the entire process sketch 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 then finally deriving and selecting the final product how the tv will fit in with the final furniture piece so this was a table unit i designed with little <coughs> okay <coughs> sorry with little detailing and going back uh, this was another uh, like what do you call it another 
thing which I picked up, like I started up with a lot of furniture pieces for this project and after this project, because that was a very fun project. They wanted to design me a TV unit. It was a quick sketch, sketch, sketch project. And I just finished it off. But then I was uh, reconsidering it. That space was, uh, uh, the space has to be used for a lot of other things, a home, a workshop, a workplace, a meeting room. So how can I, you know, do something as a designer to upgrade that place to make that designer element design element come into existence so i again started with basic uh, shapes because if you see there are a lot of basic geometrical shapes uh, which are lying on there so i wanted to use them also don't i didn't want to disc, disc, like uh, throw them away and bring all the new things so how could i modify or you know how could i take or cut or use the similar things with a geometrical uh, furniture so i took this elevation of a site like quick sketches with 3d models yes it was 10 so like it was more than 10 years ago and the only software we know was um, cad or elias so this was all done in elias 3d and then how the cube could be evolved with different styling of handles did you see how, how can i work on something like which can be a stool and a chair with a back and without a back can it be a furniture piece with a shifting molding something like that with um, variations in uh, styling of the arms with uh, a table concept with a stool these all are existing things now you can find them everywhere now but yeah 10 years ago the this were as a student project this were like great ones now they are like so common but yes and how that uh, furniture piece in the corner, the side table can be used as a storage box, can be used as a design element, can we give uh, uh, like more uh, options to this table and chair combo. Then the TV unit design, can it incorporate this entire system or a lounge chair, the chair which uh, can be a lounge chair. There were multiple ideation after that and yeah, the TV unit, which could be slidable according to the use or, you know, with frames and something like that. They were the quick, quick student models, which I could gather. And this was the final solution, which uh, was done because they wanted to have a TV unit first. And uh, yeah, this was, this was a quick renovation. So I designed these with metal bars behind and the uh, entire TV unit on, oh, uh, uh, wood this was made by a by a carpenter and this was the basic design which i gave them so yeah that was my little furniture project and uh, i i guess you guys are having questions and answers before that a quick movie again i love taking these clips as presentations because they are if you want to sell online Make sure you stand out. Go to Wix e-commerce. Definition of design, Monsieur Eames. One could describe design as a plan for arranging elements to accomplish a particular purpose. Is design an expression of art? I would rather say it's an expression of purpose. It may, if it is good enough, later be judged as art. Is design a craft for industrial purposes? No, but design may be a solution to some industrial problems. What are the boundaries of design? What are the boundaries of problems? Is design a discipline that concerns itself with only one part of the environment? No. Is it a method of general expression? No, it is a method of action. 
is design the creation of an individual? No, because to be realistic, one must always recognize the influence of those that have gone before. Is design a creation of a group? Very often. Is there a design ethic? There are always design constraints, and these often imply an ethic. Does design imply the idea of products that are necessarily useful? Yes, even though the use might be very subtle. Is it able to cooperate in the creation of works reserved solely for pleasure? Who would say that pleasure is not useful? Ought form to derive from the analysis of function? The great risk here is that the analysis may be incomplete. Can the computer substitute for the designer? Probably in some special cases, but usually the computer is an aid to the designer. Does design imply industrial manufacture? Not necessarily. Is design used to modify an old object through new techniques? This is one kind of design problem. Is design used to fit up an existing model so that it is more attractive? One doesn't usually think of design in this way. Is design an element of industrial policy? If design constraints imply an ethic, and if industrial policy includes ethical principles, then yes, design is an element in industrial policy. Does the creation of design admit constraint? Design depends largely on constraints. What constraint? The sum of all constraints. Here is one of the few effective keys to the design problem. The ability of the designer to recognize as many of the constraints as possible. His willingness and enthusiasm for working within these constraints. Constraints of price, of size, of strength, of balance, of surface, of time, and so forth. Each problem has its own peculiar list. Does design obey laws? Aren't constraints enough? Are there tendencies and schools in design? Yes, but these are more a measure of human limitations than of ideals. Is design ephemeral? Some needs are ephemeral. Most designs are ephemeral. Ought design to tend towards ephemeral or towards permanence? Those needs and designs that have a more universal quality tend toward relative permanence. How would you define yourself with respect to a decorator, an interior architect, a stylist? I wouldn't. To whom does design address itself? To the greatest number? To the specialist or the enlightened amateur? To a privileged social class? Design addresses itself to the need. After having answered all those questions, do you feel you have been able to practice the profession of design under satisfactory conditions or even optimum conditions? Yes. Have you been forced to accept compromises? I don't remember ever being forced to accept compromises, but I have willingly accepted constraints. What do you feel is the primary condition for the practice of design and for its propagation? A recognition of need. What is the future of design? Welcome back, everybody. So how was the little clip on design? And now uh, I would love to take all the questions, please. Guys, if you have any questions, you can ask it now.
Are there no questions? This means my presentation was brilliant and you guys understood everything. Uh, yeah, yeah. So how should we take it forward now? I think the Zen process is very clear in their mind as they don't have any questions right now. <laughs> yeah. So that was the presentation for uh, today because yesterday also there was no time for questions and answers. So the entire day was to discuss their projects and discuss uh, questions and answers. But I don't see any. And this was a quick... Uh, 15 minutes presentation which I did because there was no furniture design or any project so now what should we do guys you can discuss the end process also if you have any yeah, you can discuss anything from the presentation any part you uh, want to uh, make me understand again or you want anything which to which has to be repeated anything you want to make we still have a lot of time. We can do that. Maybe, ma'am, you can ask questions to them if you want. I don't know how many participants are there. Uh, I can. Uh, can you see the attendee list? Can you? Um, right. Can I uh, give you the uh, like? Uh, where is it? Like on the right, you can see the attendee list, right? Participants, you can see. Okay. Yes, yes, I can see. These, Hi. this is the list, right? Yeah, you can discuss with them if you want, and is then process to be discussed. Hmm. Maybe what they think about the design process. Do they have any opinion on that? Yeah. So how, how do I do it? Do it? Should I pick names? And... Yeah, you can choose randomly. They are here <laughs> for a workshop only, right? I guess. Yeah. So hi, Mahima. Will you able to... Mahima. Yeah, Mahima. You will unmute? No. You there? Yeah, she can answer, right? She, she can just... Yeah. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Ma'am, you can ask them to raise hand. Whoever is interested, we will allow them to talk. Yeah, please, uh, guys. I want this to end as an interactive se session. If you can participate, it will be really good. So, please, anybody. Prachi, Ronak, anybody. Ma'am. Hi, Nidhi. Good afternoon, ma'am. Hi, Nidhi. Good afternoon. So good to hear from you. Uh, ma'am, ma'am, how do you deal with color contrast in regarding furniture and interior? Okay, so we haven't discussed a color theory in this presentation. But uh, yeah, let's see. Like I've talked about this presentation and... Uh, yeah, like I've talked about this presentation, how furniture colors, right? First of all, when you start uh, designing any project or any theme, there's one important thing is either you take inspiration or you already have something in your mind. So you pick up mood boards. So how to decide on color material comes up on mood board. What are you thinking? What could, you know, how your forms 
how will you elevate your forms because materials and textures and colors have the power to bring your form into life right so this is what mood boards are and the primary thing which is decided is once you decide a form then you know what uh, material you're going to use to manufacture this then how the space this thing is going to fit like if you are doing an industrial project that's why if you see that if there are projects which are not customized they have so many color variations right if you go in the market you look for a plastic chair it will have a number of color variations because uh, you don't know as a industrial product where that furniture piece is going to fit in which space but if you're doing a customized product customize a uh, uh, furniture design project then you already know where this furniture piece is going to fit so you can always look for a theme you can build a color palette around it and you can go on designing like a color palette could these, these are not colors i mean really these are not colors but yeah you can uh, go about uh doing a lot of uh, things i mean the color the color theme and uh, if i have to show it maybe yeah see if you can see it here the color theme here is all gray and blue then subtle darker shade of black then how it is going with wood so that wood the materials and the colors have to be worked together like if you see my this project they did not have anything the house was like uh, they just just have this uh, one color theme which was very colorful because there is a kid, there was also a kid in this house so they the entire theme was yellow orange yellow orange yeah but then i decided to go a little more material you know i wanted to highlight the basic textures and colors of the materials so these solid uh, steel rods go uh, steel color these all wooden panels these all wooden uh, tv unit goes with only teak and then polish so th that's how you realize then there was uh, the entire room i wanted to you know highlight only this part as soon as you enter this is the thing which you see right because this was and uh, and and back there was a kitchen so also i wanted ask them to plant a lot of uh, uh, plants or anything if they want a privacy but that kitchen was a uh, little more inside so it was like no problem with this uh, jali instruction and it was good for the lady who was a working professional to be in the kitchen and be in the office space in the meeting space and everywhere in one go so yes the entire thing was but now with that uh, planter coming up i highlighted this wall as a little green not you know making this entire theme very subtle very material based as in the steel should look steel the wood should look wood the walls are all white only a, a wall with the uh, focus is little in green color that is it so okay, uh, did i answer your question nidhi yes ma'am thank you ma'am you're welcome anybody else uh, ma'am i think uh, you know uh, i have one question like you know what usually you uh, start with your design process like how do you start a design process like uh, do you start you know by uh, taking it with the stage of brainstorming or I start by, uh, okay yeah, yeah i am to be yeah by the brainstorming by research like what is the basic process of starting design process how do you start i design all my uh, like i start my design process in my head and then i just jot it down what is suggest for students is the better and the appropriate way to start there like if See, they are well, given any in a, uh, yeah. like 
there could be two solutions you are now student you are learning i am a professional i have already worked in this field like core product designing and architecture field for more than 5 years and then i am doing a lot of freelancing projects so i am the boss of myself there is nobody above me who is uh, viewing me and i follow basic principles of design and carry forward the design so first a uh, problem is introduced brief is given so my first thing i do is my head how uh, how i will go about it so first thing is how which design process or which ideation process you have to carry forward your design with see like i am doing a uh, multiple projects like from toy designing to logo designing to furniture design to product design to anything and everything whatever kinds of project come in i just take them so if suppose i have to design a toy and the briefing is uh, this toy has to have something which has to have something from visual discrimination yeah uh, maybe you can design a puzzle or something on those lines so what will i do i will first think uh, what my kids will love to play with my kids love doing a lot of puzzles and puzzles are one thing which uh, elevates your visual discrimination uh, side of the brain right like your uh, uh analyzing your uh, your analyzing capacity basically and the uh, and visual discriminations are when you can pinpoint those small details right when you pick that this color not goes with that and uh, something like those so i had a problem i have a solution in my mind then i start a research work i take up inspiration i find uh, my research phase one in finding there is so much information there's so much resources available in the internet uh, like you can do everything and anything from scratch right so i then uh, go and look for inspirations i look for products which are already existing in the market and is this what my client uh, asking me so i'll do a quick presentation this is what i am thinking quick sketches and this is what the market research is these are the kinds of products which are already available in market and these are the kinds of uh, products which are very good for kids brain activities and brain development so my whole idea is this which is a combination of upgrading what is already available and adding some good design features or good design elements as designer into this new puzzle or new board game which i'm uh, going to give you as a, a designer so yes i go about with a uh, idea and if i am running out of idea i look for inspirations you you can always start with a inspiration and then go on developing it or you always have a idea in your head and you can start developing from it looking for better inspiration what is already there in the market because trust me whatever you are thinking is already been done and made so how you can make those little elements of design work for your project in a better and nice away so yeah now with the the brief final from the project a green go from the client i take forward i am a old school designer i work 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 with models lot of models my one room is full of kids toys and kids models and yeah it's lot of it so then i start models with then model refinement then the final product then i come to cad and the computer graphics then the presentation any design project when you seeing the end results presentation is the most important thing how, the way how you present your product is the key to a good design that's what i believe and if you are uh, like if you are thorough with your design process you can never go wrong yeah maybe the product won't be a, a successful one it could be a failure but it has to be a good design a better appealing design when you are following all these principles and following a proper design process in deriving any project uh, krutika did i for, uh, gave you my inputs on the question you asked Yes, ma'am, for sure. Okay, so I request product design students if they have any questions regarding the design process, ma'am. Uh, 
let's uh, let me talk again i think yeah uh, no worries yeah no worries yeah now you all can see me better right i don't use uh, a lot of uh, google i i mean uh, zoom i use google so i'm much friendlier with that but anyways i think i'm doable everybody can uh, watch me and this book will be all seen in a mirror image so yeah see having kids in your house is endless possibility with their toys with their books it keeps you charged up always there is always something to be inspired from uh this is my uh, kids book which we borrowed from library in abu dhabi we have a beautiful children library and it's a wonderful designed building i have seen uh like it's really amazing so we before pandemic we used to go there every saturday and friday and be there like four or five hours the entire morning sessions would be there but with this pandemic we have to bring everything home so this book i am going to talk about is simple shapes you know how uh, the book is explaining little design elements to kids dots where in nature can you found dots the beautiful example is a ladybug so you can get inspiration you can start up from here anything which any object any product which is evolving from uh, ladybug i see a mouse coming out from this and you can go on with your creativity and your storytellings and if you say a word line then these are words can it be made into anything uh, any inspiration yes it can inspire us in so many ways how without actually making a line you can make a line with elements repetition of elements with curves where and how natural curves curves could be so complicated if you look at these snakes so how little are more you know the little curves or the deeper curves can impact your design elements and how beautifully this transaction transitions could happen and if you are looking for more beautiful biometric designs or designs inspired from nature you look at this beautiful jellyfish and uh, the moment you look you have this uh, color theory all together coming out of your mind saying oh my god this is a blue color is it poisonous is it uh, because blue color is always associated with something which is uh, when you talk about blue food i only can think of blueberries because this color is not associated with the uh, food or something like this green is uh, sorry blue is always like there is something uh, which we have to take a deeper look into so with its textures with its color combination with its shape so geometrical shape so beautifully picturized right triangles the beautiful moth which is in triangle shape square square crab so <laughs> this book i'm showing is a part of how to get inspired where to look your inspirations from a peacock which is white the colors are absent and the peacock is something which is always associated with color so how you can think from the obvious to the non obvious and beyond the coil the natural coils the beautiful shapes you can you can be inspired and this is like a beautiful concept with this picture i told my son what a uh, golden ratio is <laughs> and i talked about fibonacci fibonacci fundamentals with him so anything and everything has an inspiration you always have to look for inspiration it's lying right beside you these migrating birds and we actually have seen these flamingo migration here in abu dhabi and he could always relate to it yes mama we have seen this and this is what uh, it looked like the 
underworld under uh, the undersea creatures are so fascinating so fascinating so many beautiful colors texture it could be anything you're picking a color or a texture from the starfish from this uh, starfish again but uh, can you see it's pentagon in shape i never knew it before that a star fish was not actually a star but a pentagon a natural pentagon or a super solid hexagon structure of uh, bumblebees or the porcupine fish with a spherical shape and shape shape shapes so yes this was this is one thing which you can always start with uh, inspiration a picture can be inspiring nature is always inspiring any products which you really like and you want to follow the form uh, uh, product language is from it so you are always good to go uh so i think i provided how you can start design process with finding out your inspiration and working on projects it could be two ways either you already have preconceived uh, um in like uh, what do you call it ideation in your head or you can start with looking into inspirations uh skriti oh yes ma'am so that is it i added one more uh, color and nature thing into the presentation mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i think these people don't have any questions so you know we should wrap up by now sure yeah thank you ma'am with the completion of this workshop we conclude the day 3 and adhyay week of online e vidika 2021 on behalf of my entire team of sbia i would like to thank a lovely audience member for the successful webinar and thank you for your participation thanks a lot thank you so much for listening me all two days it was a great 3 hour workshop thank you हेलो शादाब सर हेलो